You need to go get me some socks. Yes, hold on. No. <laughs> Sounds like my house, Yvonne. Uh, I can't wait to come back to work. <laughs> morning, everyone. How are you? Good morning, Andrea. We're good. You need, I'm just waiting till 10. Okay, Scott. I made that mistake before. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, man. Good morning. Dale, how are you? I'm doing well. Happy Wednesday. Yeah. It's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. We'll, see. Yeah. we'll see how happy it is. <laughs> okay. okay. We're ready to go. Uh, Cuyahoga County Public Works Procurement and Contracting Committee meeting for Wednesday, February the 3rd, 2021. We call to order. A roll call, please. Calling the roll, Mr. Tuma. Here. Here. Mr. Miller. Ms. Here. Carlo. Ms. Present. Baker. Present. Here. M Mr. Sweeney. Present. There is a quorum. All right, and is there any public comment this morning, Madam Clerk? No, Mr. Chair, no one submitted any public comment. Okay, and if we could have approval of minutes from the January 20th, 2021 meeting. Could I have a motion? Oh, so moved, oh. sorry, so moved. Okay. okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the January 20th, 2021 meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Well, there's um, somehow, you know, they're, they're at least get Okay, and um, if we could, Madam Clerk, have the first matter referred to committee. Resolution number 2021-0034, making an award on requisition number 2931 to Wilhelm Roofing Company, in the amount not to exceed $3,282,328 for roof replacement on the Harvard Avenue maintenance facility located at 2501 Harvard Avenue, Newburgh Heights, Ohio. Okay, and uh, if we could uh, find out who's here to speak on behalf of this legislation, Mr. Dever. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Tuma. Thank you for having us today. I appreciate it. We have three items on the agenda today, and these first two items, Matt Reimer, our uh, facility administrator, is going to give the overview. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Reimer. Thanks, Director. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, committee members, council members, council staff. Uh, I'm going to be sharing my screen with one visual aid for this initial uh, presentation. Bear with me one second. And Mr. Chair, you should be seeing a, uh, a slide that shows an aerial overview of the, uh, the Harvard uh, garage facility. Hopefully that's yes. coming up here momentarily. Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, this piece of legislation is uh, execution of a contract with uh, Wilhelm Roofing uh, for the complete roof replacement of the Harvard uh, garage facility. Uh, this facility, uh, as you can see, bear with me, that it has a thing popping up. Uh, this facility, as you can see, is, is quite large uh, from a roof uh, structure standpoint, has 194,000 square feet of roofing across five distinct roofing systems. Um, we have assessed this roof uh, in full over the last two years and determined for two main reasons uh, that it needs to be replaced at this time. Uh, the first is the actual conditions of the roof. This is the original roof from the 1994 construction of this former RTA facility. Um, it, uh, uh, it, in the last stages of our project with the Harvard uh, Consolidation Project, we had heavy rains in the June and July timeframe of 2019 when we were getting ready to move in. And that was concerning. So we did undertook a couple of uh, additional assessments an infrared survey and uh, uh, some uh, cutaway uh, surveys of, um, of the roof system and determined that it is past its useful life and we need to re replace that roof system. 
the uh, in addition, we are also through another county contract uh, through Department of Sustainability scheduled to be putting a significant solar array on this roofing system. And so to do so on a um, on a roof that is at the end of its useful life was not the right timing either. So we made the recommendation and technical determination that we need to replace the roof now. And we went out to bid on this project. Uh, this was a formal uh, invitation to bid. We had six bidders reply. Um, we had an initial uh, consultant estimate for the cost of this work at $5.2 million. And we had a great competitive environment that brought five of six bids underneath that estimate and uh, the, the award recommendation of $3,282,328. I also wanna highlight that the recommended awardee Wilhelm Roofing is a Cuyahoga County based business. And because that they were within 2%, they were the number two low bidder. And because they were within 2% of the, um, the lowest bidder, a non Cuyahoga County based business, uh, they were able to uh, offer to match that low bid. And so that's what our, is our award recommendation here today uh, based on uh, ordinance uh, from code 502. And uh, we're excited to, that this uh, program has that opportunity uh, to be able to do that. Um, this uh, project funding uh, will be split uh, similarly to the uh, consolidation project, 56% uh, from sanitary, 26% from road and bridge, and 18% from general fund, which match the respective occupancy footprint of each of those activities within the Harbor Yard complex. Um, excited to present this project and happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Reimer. Um, as far as the roof itself goes, you indicated that that's an original roof from 1994, correct? It is, sir. Was was the roof in um, bad shape or getting in bad shape or is this? I mean, we had it... done previous planning assessments that did have a, a, a <clears throat> seven to 10 year lifespan left on the roof when we were in the middle of the project. So we were surprised when we got um, extensive leaks that appeared near the end of the consolidation project. And with that indication, we did try and repair those leaks, but we also undertook two more in-depth surveys of the roof, an infrared assessment in August of 2019, and 12 uh, section cutaways uh, to evaluate uh, where we felt the infrared showed moisture in the roofing system. So we did do much more ex extensive uh, <clears throat> uh, assessments in 2019 when we saw uh, problems that we're gonna risk uh, the improvements that we just made to the facility. Okay, and then as far as, I, I, this, might, <laughs> this might sound silly, but was there a warranty on the original roof? Uh, there was not a warranty, at least there was not an active warranty on the original roof. We did engage RTA extensively to determine their, their, uh, their history of that roofing system. It was past its uh, warranty. Um, it is a, uh, through our assessments, it is a, uh, uh, Hyperlon roof product that uh, is no longer made uh, because it tends to get brittle and uh, and deteriorate over time. So patching it also for that reason uh, was not a uh, feasible alternative uh, for this, uh, for our needs. Okay, so is the new roof going to be of a different material now? It will be, it will be. So we're going back in this uh, roofing system uh, with a, a standard EPDM, which is a rubber-based 60 mil uh, layered roof. It has two layers of insulation beneath that rigid board insulation uh, for both the insulating factor as well as the tapered top layer to, for drainage. And uh, this is a standard uh, commercial roofing system uh, for both this kind of construction as well as uh, planned to support the, uh, the loading and the characteristics of the solar array that will be installed afterwards. Okay, and then if you could just briefly, I don't know if this is for another time, but in your, a quick synopsis of what the solar array is intended to do and the purpose of uh, that. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. So this is through a solar power purchase agreement executed through Department of Sustainability back in 2019, I believe was the contract. It installed uh, solar arrays on uh, four county facilities, this being the fourth, uh, the medical examiner garage, the animal shelter in Valley View, and the Jane Edna Hunter building in, um, in downtown Cleveland. All three of those buildings are complete. Uh, this is the, the big boy in, in that, uh, uh, that contract. This is approximately 0 .7, 0 0.67 megawatts of an array of a total of 1.2 megawatts of solar capability under that contract. 
Uh, so it's a it's over 50 percent of the solar load that we're uh, hoping to achieve through that uh, that contract and in coordination with Director Foley. Um, and that array will go over the probably 75% of the roofing uh, square footage that, that you see. Uh, that will have the net effect of having about 25% of the Harvard facility uh, being delivered by the solar generated power uh, that will be mounted on the roof. Okay, very good. Okay, um, I'll open it up to any questions from my colleagues on the committee. Uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I heard, I heard uh, Mr. Miller, and then I believe Ms. Conwell after that. Okay, I just have one quick question, and that question is, what's the expected timeline to completion? Good question. Yes, uh, through the chair to Councilman Miller, we have an approximate seven-month timeline to completion from the start of on-site work. Uh, we'd like to begin work in the month of March if the weather breaks, if not uh, early April, so this will put us in fall of 2021 for project completion. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Ms. Conwell? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. To Mr. Reimer, um, what's the, um, so in terms of, you talked about the array. So if we're redoing the roof, will we have to redo the, the solar arrays and all that, or will they be able to work around it? I, I don't know how it would. Uh, yes, uh, through the chair to Councilwoman Conwell. Uh, so when we started having uh, these deficiencies, we worked with uh, the provider, uh, the solar roof provider, and, and we have held off on that schedule. So there's no solar infrastructure on the roof currently. Um, they are waiting for this roof installation, and then they'll be installing it probably in phases as we complete roof phases. They'll be up there putting um, the array on uh, this year and into next spring. And so that... And so that's where you talked about the 75%. It'll be seven and going forward and moving forward, it'll be 75% of the roof covered with solar array. Correct? That's, ac that's accurate. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the committee? Uh, yes, Chair, I have a question. Okay, Ms. Baker. So um, the 3.2 million for the roof replacement, how much more is it to add the solar array? What is the total cost of the roof replacement? Uh, through the chair to Councilwoman Baker, so uh, two separate contracts. Uh, the the solar PPA was already in um, in progress. That is a different mechanism. So there's no upfront capital cost for the uh, uh, the solar installation. And there would have been though had we installed the solar array and then removed it or modified around it to do this roof project later to the tune of several hundred thousand dollars was our estimate of that impact. So that's why we held off on uh, putting the solar array on until we get this roof uh, replaced. Uh, to your point though, about the cost of the solar array, that mechanism of that contract, and I would defer to Director Foley if, um, if more detail than what I'm about to brief, uh, but they, um, they provide the, the capital construction and then we buy back over a certain period, the solar electricity at a certain rate, uh, which is lower than the rate that we're paying um, off the grid. And then after that, after that uh, period of time, which I believe is, uh, uh, I'm not gonna guess, I believe it's 10 years, but I, I, I don't wanna guess, uh, then that uh, becomes our, um, our owned array at that point in time. Okay, that, yeah, that's... Okay. And, and just one additional question, uh, with putting um, the 3 point million into the roof and then additional dollars for the solar array, what is the value of the building? Uh, through the chair to Councilwoman Baker, when you say the value of the building, uh, are, are you asking about the value of the improvements that we've made? No, just, if, I mean, making an investment of $3.2 million plus the cost of the solar array, putting it on a maintenance facility, is what is the value of the maintenance facility? Are, is this a, retur a good return of putting this roofing on this building? Uh, well, in, in subjective terms, Councilwoman, I'd say absolutely. We, this has been a strategic effort of the department uh, to consolidate all of our operations out of one uh, major facility. This will be a major facility for the foreseeable future and to protect that investment of the, um, of the interior improvements and efficiencies we've made, uh, investing in the, uh, in the building envelope is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. So we're not, I'm just making sure we're not over investing in a roof system on a building that may not be, uh, have the value to support it. That's all. Understood. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> any additional questions from members of the committee on this piece of legislation? Mr. Chair, I have one. Okay, I think um, Mr. Sweeney, I think got in there quick, quick first. So we'll go with Mr. Sweeney and then Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, to my colleagues and Mr. Reiner. I have a, the question in regards to the amount of time it takes to complete the project. Uh, you mentioned you start in March, dealing with the city of Newburgh Heights and with the COVID uh, that's affecting everybody's or, uh, ability to perform. The turnaround time with the inspections and the uh, approvals in working with the city of Newburgh Heights, is that gonna have an impact on the possible keeping within the time frame? Mr. Reimer? Uh, through the chair to, to the councilman, welcome, sir. And I uh, look forward to working Thanks. with you in the future. Um, my, uh, uh, the good news on this is we've already been through the building official and approval process for this project. We have plan review approval. And once we have the contract awarded, uh, Wilhelm Roofing will be able to pull permits and get started right away. And we have a great working relationship with the village of Newburgh Heights through our uh, last three years of investment uh, into that facility, both with the initial modifications um, and consolidation project with the PPE storage building that just completed in December and this project and the solar array. We've been working closely with that building department now for, uh, for three years. So uh, we're in good shape to start the project and we have the relationships built uh, when we get to project completion for acceptance and, and approval at the end of, uh, of the permit. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, may I follow up? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, we do have a true partner with the village of Newburgh Heights and just, it's gonna take, I'm looking forward to sitting with the director and yourself on Monday to go a little bit more in depth. So I don't wanna to take too much time now, but I'm looking forward to understanding the, we own a building in a different municipality and the contractor is working with that municipality, what roles that we play. And then also uh, who's responsible for making sure that the environmental uh, aspects of this project are working and making the returns, not the local municipality. That would be us checking to make sure it's working and the uh, c contractors installed it properly and the rate of return is coming, stuff like that. I we'll might get more in detail to, about. That makes sense, Mr. Reimer? Understood, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. All right. Chairman. All right, thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Mr. Miller? Yes, uh, just one follow-up question as to whether the contractor is either an MBE or FBE, and if not, is there a minority participation in the contract? Okay, Mr. Reimer? Uh, through the chair to the to the councilman, uh, the contractor is not a uh, SBE, MBE, or WBE prime, but they reported a participation of um, uh, MBE and 5%, uh, SBE, WBE, 6.3%, and uh, SBE, MBE of 15%. So a total participation um, claimed, I'm sorry, uh, I think I messed up the category, 6.3% of SBE, 15% MBE, and 5% WBE uh, through three different subcontractors reported on this project. Any follow-up, Mr. Miller? Uh, no, thank you. That's okay. good. Okay. Anything else from members of the committee? Any other questions? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Reimer, what, what are you looking for as far as the time frame on this? Moving uh, Mr. Chair, this, this project can go uh, three readings. Okay. Uh, we do want to get started in March, but that'll still give us ample time to uh, uh, award the contract and, and get started. Okay. With that, I'll make a motion for a uh, second reading. Second, Miller. I have a motion and a second for second reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. And if we could move on to the next resolution, Madam Clerk. Resolution number 2021-0035, making an award on requisition number 3117 to Sterling Professional Group in the amount not to exceed $870,309 for construction services and partial renovation of the sixth floor of the County Prosecutor's Office at the Halley Warehouse. Okay, and uh, Mr. Reimer, are you gonna to speak to this legislation as well? I will be, Mr. Chairman. Director, anything you would like to add first or? No, we just, we have a, a few people to speak on the merits of the project also from the prosecutors, Dave Fatari and Dominic Sforzo. So Matt will uh, interwine what, okay. interweave them into uh, the discussion. So thanks. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks for being here, folks. 
Uh, so good morning, Mr. Chair, council members. Again, uh, this legislation is a contract award request um, resulting from a request, uh, formal request for bids uh, to uh, Sterling Professional Group in the amount of $870,309. And this is for the build out of a new and expanded uh, prosecutor's office task force, uh, ICAC, Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force um, uh, space uh, in, uh, in downtown Cleveland at the uh, Halley uh, Archives location. Uh, this build out is in space that is uh, currently unoccupied and uh, had been scheduled at the original project to be built out for a future function to be determined. We determined that this is the best place in consultation with the prosecutor's office uh, for their expanded mission requirements. And we're looking forward to get started on, on this project. Uh, they have a, uh, uh, a deadline to be out of their current facility, which is a leased and undersized facility um, uh, out of downtown uh, by uh, the end of July of this year. And so we're looking to begin construction and build this space out uh, with appropriate amenities uh, for, for the prosecutor's office before the August 1st uh, uh, timeline where they need to be moved in. Um, the uh, prosecutor's office has supplied the majority of the funding for this project and we have that in hand and the build out will include uh, uh, typical restroom facilities, uh, open office environment, uh, some uh, digital uh, uh, lab uh, spaces and training spaces uh, for that, um, that function. And uh, as director mentioned on the call is the commander of the ICAC and, um, and Mr. Dominic Sforzo from the prosecutor's office should there be any questions about the, uh, about the nature of their, of their work and their, and their operational needs. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I, to carry on, uh, this project had 16 bidders. Uh, that was uh, significant, and uh, and really, I think the byproduct of our engagement with the contractor workforce through the um, through the COVID-19 uh, building modifications program, we got a lot of new bidders that we haven't seen in the past five years, and and was a really competitive environment. Uh, we had an estimate going into this uh, project and bid of 1.443 million. And you can see that the uh, that the low bidders came back uh, at a substantial uh, competitive uh, cost to that at 870,000 for this particular awardee. This uh, contractor was the lowest bidder with the that had the 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 lowest bidder that had a technically compliant package. Uh, they had there were two uh, lower bidders that did not have uh, adequate bid packages uh, for consideration further. With that, I open it up to any questions uh, to either myself or the operational team. Okay, um, I, I, whoever can answer this best, let's put it that way. Um, so as far as the ICAC needing this space, um, are, they, are those folks currently in, in a space? You, you indicated that the lease is running out. Is that what you had indicated? Uh, to, to the chair, uh, the lease, the current lease is expired. We haven't had luck with them in extending it in the past, but the ownership is about to change and it is undersized for their mission needs. They want to expand this mission. And with that, if I could uh, maybe defer to uh, Commander Fratari and uh, Dominic, if there's anything else you want to add about the, the need for you guys to, to increase your mission. Okay, yeah, so we have, uh, we've grown significantly in the past few years. Um, our current space is uh, about 1,100 square feet. Uh, it's able to support um, our, our forensics vehicle, which is stored inside. It's able to support uh, all of our full-time folks that work out here. Um, but as was said, it's 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 grossly undersized, uh, grossly out of space. Uh, just the need for additional space, additional uh, resources. Okay. If I could just ask, how many folks do you have currently on staff there? We have uh, 11 folks here full-time. Okay. Um, and then uh, is, is the new space going to be, and I don't know, again, Mr. Reimer, I'm not sure if you'd be the one to answer this. Is it going to be compliant with respect to CARES Act um, protocol and pandemic issues? Uh, to the chair, uh, yes, uh, we modified our, um, our designs accordingly to the other uh, modifications we were making in this building um, to include some of the protections in the restroom uh, and automation of the new build out of the restrooms we'll be doing. And we already had in place the, um, the COVID HVAC modifications that we were being made uh, that also serviced this space. Yes, okay. sir. And I, yeah, I understand that the money is coming out of the prosecutor's office. Is there um, any opportunity to use any, any additional CARES Act funding to assist with that or cut costs? I'm just 
ask. I'm throwing that out there on the fly. Um, so no substantial uh, uh, use to be able to dedicate CARES Act money to this contract, okay. but but CARES Act money did go into the, the building overall modifications that do service this space. Okay. Um, and uh, I hope that answers your question, Mr. Chair. Oh, oh, thank you. And then what type of time frame are you looking at as far as the need to move this along? With the tight timeline on their uh, expiring lease this summer, we would request second reading consideration on this legislation, Mr. Chair. Okay. And then how long would it take to do the build out? It's going to take us till that July 31st. We're going to have to really press with this contractor to uh, to meet that deadline, and we're going to do so. Okay. All right. I'll open it up to uh, members of the committee. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Miller. I have two questions, and the first question is that you mentioned about there being two bidders that were technically non-compliant. Could you tell me... Uh, how much lower their bids were than the, than the winning bidder and what the nature of the technological dis, uh, problems were with their uh, their bids? I sure will. Through the chair to Councilman Miller, uh, the lowest bidder was at $250,000 and they only bid on the electrical portion of the project. So it was not a compliant bid. They did not bid on the project as specified. The second lowest bidder was 787,000. Um, so that was a difference of about $90,000 uh, lower. Uh, and they did not have uh, any technical submissions that were required by the invitation to bids. Uh, none of the uh, qualifications that, that are required by code for us to evaluate for a technical capability perspective were provided uh, that are required by the uh, bid package. And uh, my second question is, as you mentioned that that the prosecutor's office provided most of the funding, could you uh, could you tell what the uh, full funding mix is, uh, what the sources are, and how much money for each? I will uh, through the chair to Councilman Miller. Uh, to date, uh, the prosecutor's office has provided uh, the county with seven hundred eighty thousand in in funding uh, related to this project. Um, a general fund uh, will, will cover the remaining uh, approximately uh, 93,000 of this uh, project award, excuse me, 90,000 of, of this project uh, award. And, um, uh, and what we'll be doing though too, is when we get the contractor uh, on board and they provide us with their schedule of values, which is a standard uh, submission of a contract uh, before notice to proceed, we'll see uh, the better breakdown and make sure that we appropriately uh, divide uh, the general fund contribution to the prosecutor's office contribution. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any additional questions? Uh, just one chair. Okay, Ms. Baker. I may have missed it, but how much square footage are we talking about and uh, how many are occupying it? And how much longer do you think we will have for them? to be able to stay there a while until they run out of space, if, if at all. Through the chair to Councilwoman Baker, uh, this will be an, an extensive upgrade in their space capabilities. The gross footprint that we're building out is 16,000 square feet. It does include corridors and uh, some lobby areas to get through the freight elevator system and a break room and restroom that can be used um, uh, that, uh, uh, that aren't the direct office environment that uh, the command staff will be in, uh, but, uh, and we do have training capability uh, and training room capability that they can work with their law enforcement partners in that they do not have that capability in their current space now. How many are occupying this space? Uh, uh, Dominic and Dave, if I could uh, defer to you on, on your occupancy plans. Uh, we're hoping that, you know, with all the additional space we have, um, and the fact that we'd like to bring in some more law enforcement partners as well as full-time staff. Um, we're looking at, you know, 25 to 30 individuals. Um, we have a lot of affiliates that come in and do work with us on a daily basis. So we're going to be able to supply room for them to work as well as some of our county prosecutor's office employees. Okay, good. Just gives us an idea of what, you're, what you have there. Thank you for your answers. Um, any additional questions from members of the committee? Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Sweeney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dominic, it's nice to see you again. Haven't seen you in a while. And uh, to Mr. Reimer, since it's a county prosecutor project, 
who's the point person going to be? Is it going to be somebody from the prosecutor's office or somebody from your office to uh, manage the day-to-day operations with the contractor in case something you know unique comes up or a problem exists and how can it be modified? Uh, through the chair uh, to Councilman Sweeney, uh, it will be a county public works a project manager for management of the construction with close coordination with Dominic in particular. Dominic is our, our go-to point of contact with the prosecutor's office. Uh, we've been uh, working with him on his requirements uh, extensively for this project and we'll continue to do so through the construction process. Thank you. I was just trying to get how it flowed and you answered it very specifically. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Any additional questions? Okay, seeing none. Um, Mr. Reimer, you indicated this is um, a time is of the essence here. Um, so I would, um, I, I'm, I suppose you would like this to move along on second reading suspension. If you could so consider it, Mr. Chair, yes, please. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna make that motion for second reading suspension in R2021-0035, if I could okay. have a I have a second from Ms. Baker. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Um, Madam Clerk, if we can move on to the next piece of legislation. Resolution number 2021-0037, authorizing a revenue generating agreement with FlexJet in the amount not to exceed $11,059,572 for lease of space and the facilitation of private construction of a new corporate headquarters a flight operations center and related improvements of certain properties at the Cuyahoga County Airport. Okay. Good morning. Who do we have speaking on behalf of this? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Once again, Michael Dever with Public Works. John Myers will be doing the presentation on this, but once again, we have a few guests that will be joining us. Okay. The mayor of Richmond Heights, um, Dave, uh, I'm sorry, David Roach will be joining us as, long, as well as Jay Hubeline from FlexJet, so uh, thank you. Okay, well, welcome gentlemen, gentle persons. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Mr. Chair, this is John Myers and uh, we're here today happy to present this uh, uh, interesting project for the county and um, for the whole, whole region, frankly. Um, FlexJet is a leading global provider of fractional jet ownership programs and is a current tenant uh, in related companies at uh, the county airport. They're looking uh, to continue their growth and expansion and uh, wish to facilitate that by uh, building uh, a significant new building on the airport uh, field and campus. And uh, we have uh, taken this opportunity to consolidate several current leases which are out there and combine it for ease of administration and practical purposes into one lease to uh, uh, allow for uh, some demolition of buildings and the construction of this new headquarters uh, for their growth and expansion. Um, I have taken the opportunity to uh, provide you with some background information. I know at the last meeting, uh, Councilwoman Conwell had some general questions. So uh, at your leisure, you can look over over those or, uh, but uh, this morning's focus is on this particular lease. And just to set the tone, I'd ask if uh, Mayor Roach, who is the mayor of Richmond Heights, uh, could uh, um, share his thoughts on the, the project uh, as we go into more details, before we go into more details. Okay, mayor. Thank you. thank you for being here, Mayor. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, we're very excited that uh, that FlexJet has decided uh, to make this major investment in, in their global operation facility. And that's based here in uh, Richmond Heights. Uh, they are one of the largest uh, employers in the city. So it's a major uh, effect on our city. Um, and the FlexJet is, is an important member of the, our, our business community. Uh, we are committed to working very closely with them towards the successful development of the state of the art project. And we have uh, uh, done so here uh, over the last uh, number of months uh, and continue to uh, expect to do so. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate your comments. Um, I, I've got a question, Mr. Myers, as far as yes. that um, time frame of 20, 20 years, is that, a, is that standard for airport fare or? Yes, uh, both, both uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, to both here and around the country, um, the, 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 there's a common format. <clears throat> it could be, you know, in that 
period of time, roughly. Uh, each deal is slightly different, but generally speaking, uh, the county continues to own the land. So this is historically largely just a land lease. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so that uh, there's some great length of time to be able to rationalize the investment, the private investment in this case by FlexJet, uh, because at the end of this uh, potential for its initial 20 with two 10 year renewals, okay. at the end of this 40 year term, this and the other buildings covered by the lease will convert to ownership by the county, both uh, building and land. Okay, and at the end of the 10 year, uh, is it a mutual uh, renewal? It's at FlexJet's uh, uh, control and option. It's the company's option to take uh, these renewals. And in the event that that uh, term ends, then it still reverts back to the county at that point? Correct. Okay. Okay. Any questions from my colleagues? Mm -hmm. uh, Any, uh, nothing from the committee. Okay. All right. Um, then, uh, Mr. Myers, as far as the time frame on moving this along what are we looking at as far as we would ask uh, i know the company with this has been a long negotiation process and uh they have um are anxious to get going and uh spring is essentially a uh, despite looking outside is almost here so there's environmental remediation that has to take place and demolition and and to take advantage of the uh, construction season here in cleveland we would ask that you pass us this on second reading suspension. Okay. Um, with uh, with that in mind, and I'm sure the mayor probably would like this to move along as well. So I'll make a motion for second reading suspension on R2021-0037. Could I have a second? Second. second. Before we make the, the oh, I'm sorry. Make the, I also have a question. Okay. Uh, I just, uh, this is a big project. And so it's taken me a minute to digest all that's been proposed. Okay. So this is a revenue generating, how, how much square footage is there and what is the price per square foot that we're paying for the 11 million? Do you have, um, down mm, Mr. How, do you, how do we determine the 11 million number? Sure, uh, Mr. Chair to Councilwoman Baker. Um, essentially, we've taken the leases that are currently in place. So historically, we've had uh, several years ago, we had an outside study come in, uh, aviation experts look at this. We've worked as a team uh, of public works with uh, Allegra, our real estate consultants, and also CNS companies, which are aviation consultants. So we've looked to look at both the Cleveland and the, the unique aspect of this. Um, the number is not easily uh, broken down, um, Mr. Chair, to Councilwoman Baker. The $11 million represents uh, a multitude of sources. So for ease of administration, we've consolidated both ground rent, building rent, fuel float uh, fees, and privilege fees um, all into one, one payment. So we're, we're moving forward from where we currently are and have built in some um, percentage escalators throughout the term of the lease. So uh, to break it down into what it costs per square foot, um, is not as, as it's not like a normal lease that we would do that um, uh, is, is, is done. Secondly, they're building the building. We're essentially doing a ground lease. So all the investment is private investment. Um, so this is all gonna be revenue generating, meaning the, the FlexJet is paying the county all these different funds to, um, to uh, um, satisfy their presence at the field. Okay, and if I may follow then, uh, the 11 million, what period of time does that cover? Is that for- That's the first, uh, Mr. Chair to Councilwoman Baker, that's the first 20, the initial capital I, capital T, initial term as defined by the lease is 20 years. So that's $11 million is revenue collected uh, by the county over that time. Currently, the, the collected payments would be roughly a half a million dollars per year if that helps uh, uh, break it down to see it um, and then for the next 20 years. So 500,000 over right. with, each year for 20 years. Correct, with some modest escalators built in. With modest escalators. 
yeah. then they were to renew for the future 20 years, because I believe you said it was 40. Yes. Is, is that again with modest increases or is that? A yes. If for, for, for So we've outlined it for what the relationship would be for the next 40 years. Um, I can't think of any reason why uh, FlexJet wouldn't take those renewals and it's in their option, but um, it, it's uh, broken down for uh, management of the lease uh, in, in that way. Uh, so we fully anticipate it to be a fully 40 year lease. So those escalators are built in throughout the entire 40 year term. Uh, so for the, the, the renewal terms are two 10 year terms. So for the second half of the lease, if you look at it that way. Um, so the, the first 10 years would be $7 million and the second 10 year renewal would be $8 million in revenue um, achieved by, by the county. Um, and so a total, a total of $27 million in revenue to the county over this 40 year period. Okay, that, that's all for now, thank you. Okay, Mr. Miller. Yes, uh, my question is uh, what the uh, construction timetable is when we expect this to be uh, completed and occupied. I'm uh, Mr. Chair to Councilman Miller. I'm happy to have uh, Jay Hubline, who's one of the executives at FlexJet, who's most familiar with the project. And I'll defer to him to um, state more specifically what their anticipated timetable would be, uh, assuming that there would be approval of this um, this uh, okay. lease agreement. Uh, Mr. Hubline, welcome. Well, on behalf of FlexJet, thank you to the committee for allow us, allowing us to be here today. Uh, our hope is that if we can hit this construction window, uh, that we, we would be about 18 months start to finish barring any major impact from a COVID kind of force majeure type uh, uh, nature. But um, as uh, Mr. Myers stated, uh, we're a little time sensitive right now that we've got to start with uh, some asbestos uh, remediation here in short order. Uh, and if we can do that, then I think we can hold 18 months. Okay, well, I appreciate that response, and I'd like to thank you for your investment in Cuyahoga County and look forward to working with you. I we, we appreciate that. We, we would say that uh, while it might not be the best weather environment for an aviation company, we think the people are the best in the, uh, in the world, so that's why we want to be here. Very uh, good. Thank you. Okay, any, any additional questions from members of the committee? Okay. I, uh, I made a previous uh, motion to uh, move this along on second reading suspension. Um, I'm just awaiting a second. If we're Conwell second. second. Okay, we have Ms. Conwell with a second on R2021-0037. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. And um, is there any miscellaneous business before the uh, committee this morning? Not today. Not today, okay. <laughs> um, seeing none, um, we'll make a motion to adjourn at 10.41 a.m. Can I have a second? I'll second. second. Okay, with a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it, and uh, Public Works will adjourn at 10.41 a.m. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you all. Good job, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Hey, John. See you later. Bye-bye.